So now I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, science and research and what we know about it. Um, the federal government, six years ago or so, funded the National Toxicology Program. It's a division of the federal government. And they were looking to basically justify the standards. Um, and by the way, the federal government hasn't spent much, if any, money outside of this, in this space. And of course, as you know, we were a leader 30 years ago. But we have no scientific research going on today. So when the NTP study came out, it was an epidemiology study in which it was statistically significant. In other words, after the results were met, I could say confidently, by 95% confidence level, that what we found is real. So they had these large populations, transmitters in these epidemiology studies, and they watched over time what would happen. And what they found was there was frontal lobe cancer. There was heart cancer, statistically significant. I'm, off, I'm often asked why there seems to be such a dynamic in the market and, and such differences of opinion. Well, I'm an engineer, and when I look at something, I look at the statistics. And the only way I could accept the direct link to a human is by taking 10,000 children, lock them in a room, and 10,000 children, and radiate those children against these. And what I'm going to do is watch who dies over that 20 year period from exposures to RF signals. And then I can say definitively, statistically speaking, I can say 95% confidence level that frontal lobe cancer they got is consistent to the whole population. So if you wonder why there's this drama in the marketplace, it's because there's not statistically significant data, but a heck of a lot of information we learned that mega data, the mega study of the studies, certainly indicate there's a problem. But here was the first case in a long, long time where we now had statistically significant proof. That was followed up with Ramazani's study. Ramazani's in, in, in Europe, and actually Italy, they have a consortium of researchers. They did almost identical what they did in the US with the NTP. They found the same thing. They found the frontal lobe and the heart cancers. Um, and so that's like pretty interesting. They found the same results from the same exposures and the epidemiologies from the same, having the same effects. Um, and so um, you look at the preponderance of research, the preponderance of research that talks about the linkages between body response to RF signals, and there's without a doubt, no question by most who are aware that they're drink linked. Um, and if you hear um, a, a, um, a microbiologist say, there's no links, what you know is either they're really, really stupid or they haven't looked at the research. Because if you look at the research, there's a clear preponderance of evidence to talk about the linkages. So the debate about up to 4G is not a debate by most of the science and research community. Um, the National Toxicity Program, part of the government, got sort of not what they hoped for. They got a link, which they didn't want. Let's talk a little bit about the World Health Organization, international governance body on all of the world's health. Uh, they, they classify electromagnetic radiation as a, 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 a 2B carcinogenic. It's possible that it's a, it can cause, it's possible it can cause cancer. 
It's not probable, it's possible. And so, what does that mean? Well, if you go and have a Wi-Fi in a classroom, it's possible there may be a linkage between the Wi-Fi signal and your kid. It's possible. What are other two be carcinogenics? Arsenic is a carcinogenic. That fits the two B category. Welding, the smoke from welding, is considered a carcinogenic. Yeah, a volatile organic compound. The fumes from gas or petroleum are considered carcinogenic, possible carcinogenic. So I like to think of it this way. When we have a class, and we have a bunch of new students, and all the adults are out there, and we, we talk about our classroom, and we're going to put Wi-Fi on, we say to the audience, by the way, it, you know, we have Wi-Fi, and, 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 and it's exactly the same kind of potential carcinogenic as the welding. So it's like welding all day in the classroom, and all the smoke is going to influence our kids. It's like the gas is going to generate a volatile organic compound, which can potentially bother your kids. And of course, the adults in the room would say, what? You're exposing my children to a carcinogenic of that type all day, seven days a week, or five days a week, seven hours a day? That's sort of like the question you need to ask yourself when you hear about uh, Wi-Fi in a classroom. And by the way, it's only the thermal that was ever considered, not the biological. So we have um, others who begin publishing the plethora of research that we know about. Um, the Bayer Initiative uh, is one group. And actually, Dr. Carpenter out of New York, uh, uh, Albany, I think he's out of, um, for 30 years has been writing about the impact of emissions to us. Uh, Blake, Dr. Blake, who was in um, um, Columbia, uh, for years has been uh, talking about electromagnetic radiation. He's been publishing in Bioinitiative. Dr. Ali Johansson out of Sweden has been um, writing uh, pretty serious publications through Bioinitiative. So if you want to know more about it in detail, you, you really want to go visit their site, the Bioinitiative site. They, they do a pretty good job and have been for years and years and years. Um, we also have other sources uh, that talk about the plethora of impacts, and that's with uh, uh, Dr. Joel out of uh, Berkeley. He's, he's been an advocate for years and um, actually is pretty instrumental in changing some of the legislative uh, impacts in California with his work. But he's a wonderful source. He keeps current with all the research that's coming out throughout the world, uh, does a very great job. And then, of course, um, Environmental Health Trust is Dr. Deborah Davis. I think she may be talking. She's been tirelessly working this subject for years and years, and she's actually put together a wonderful group of uh, experts that are producing uh, really solid work and representing us in legislative and, uh, and uh, public information. So you, you really want to go to these other sources if you're looking for more information.